And it came to pass in the month of Shesu, in the 20th year, as I was in Sheshan, the palace, that Hananiah, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judea, Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had, that had escaped, which were left of the uh, captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The walls of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. And it came to pass, when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven and said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant, that, that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Let thine ear now be attentive and thine eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel, thy servants, and confess their sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee, both I and my father's house have sinned. We have dealt very corruptly against them, against thee, and have not kept thy uh, commandments nor the statutes, nor thy judgments, which thou commandest thy servant Moses. Remember I, beseech, remember, I beseech thee the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, If ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. But if ye turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them, thou, though there were of you, cast out into the uttermost part of the heaven, yet I will gather them from, it, from thence, and I will bring them into the place that I have chosen to set my name there. And now, now these are the, thy servants and thy people whom thou hast redeemed by thy great power and by thy strong hand. O Lord, I beseech thee, let now thine ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant and to the, uh, the prayer of thy, uh, thy servants who desire to fear thy name and prosper. I pray thee, thy servants this day, and grant him mercy in thy sight of this man, for I was the king's cupbearer. I'm going to be speaking tonight on uh, Nehemiah's burden uh, for the Lord. Uh, and for what was going on in uh, Jerusalem, we said, I'll just get myself organised. I felt the Lord was guiding me to speak on Nehemiah. The book of uh, Nehemiah is like the continuation of the narrative of Ezra, where there was a group of exiles who'd returned uh, to rebuild Jerusalem. It highlights the faithfulness of God uh, and his promises to his chosen people, restoring them to the land after years in captivity. Nehemiah was one of those who didn't go with Ezra to, build, uh, to rebuild Jerusalem, as it says that he heard that those who had went to Jerusalem were uh, under pressure and the walls of Jerusalem were broken down and the gates were burning with fire. As Kenny was saying, we sick, sorry. As Kenny was saying this morning, about that small cloud that uh, Elijah had prayed for, uh, for the rain to come. When difficulties in our lives uh, come, what do we do? Are we like the children of Israel? Do we panic uh, when, we see, when they see the Egyptians uh, pursuing them? Or do we say, like Kenny said this morning, but God, do we bring these things to the Lord and trust that, that we know that all things work together for good to them who love God and to them who are called? God bless him when I heard that this morning, because that's what I was kind of preparing uh, for the night. What, uh, what Nehemiah's reaction, what was Nehemiah's reaction to hearing what, uh, about the news in Jerusalem? 
It says in verse 4, And it came to pass, when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Eh, before the God of heaven. He prayed intelligent prayers. He didn't, he, he didn't pray a generic prayer. He prayed a prayer eh, that detailed why the children of Israel were in exile. But he also reminded God eh, of the covenant that he made with the children of Israel. As it says in eh, verse 9, But if ye turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them, though there were of you cast out unto the uttermost part of heaven, yet I will gather them from, from hence, and I will bring them into the place that I have chosen to set my name there. Praise God tonight, brothers and sisters. We're in Zion where God's name is uh, above the pulpit. God has raised up Zion for a specific purpose. Nehemiah prayed to God that God would use his position, Nehemiah's position as a cupbearer, to say to the king uh, that, he want, that he wanted to go uh, to rebuild the walls uh, of Jerusalem. And uh, the, Lord, the Lord answered his prayer. The Lord gave Nehemiah that opportunity to speak to the king. Uh, but Nehemiah, Nehemiah, when he was being a cupbearer uh, to the king, uh, his, his face was sad. It said his countenance was sad. And the king noticed. And the king asked which, uh, what was wrong with him. And Nehemiah then said uh, that he got news about the state of Jerusalem. And he asked the king, uh, and the king asked him, which, uh, and the king said to him, uh, what are you asking for? And what I got a blessing when I read uh, that, that this passage is uh, when, when, before Jer uh, Nehemiah gave the king the answer, he said, uh, he prayed to the God of heaven. He didn't just, he didn't trust in his own ability. He didn't even trust in the king but he prayed to the God in heaven. And praise God tonight, and here in Zion, we've been taught that we can trust in the Lord. He said, let me go to the, uh, the city of my fathers to rebuild it. And the king granted his release to, to go to the city to rebuild the walls. And Nehemiah showed faith that the Lord was with him because he, uh, because he gave the king a time when he would come back. Nehemiah had a burden for the work of the Lord. And he went to Jerusalem. And it says that he was met with opposition. But I got a blessing when I read uh, further on in Nehemiah, it says uh, in Nehemiah 4 and 6. So built we the wall, and all the wall was joint together unto half thereof. And the people had a mind to work. And we praise God tonight. We here in Zion, we've got, uh, we've got a burden for this work. And we... Like the, like the children of Israel at that time with Nehemiah, we've got a mind for this, this work for here in Zion. I got a blessing when I was preparing this and I was thinking about the, the scripture underneath the pulpit where it says, for other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. The pastor uh, brought a beautiful foundation. He, lay, he laid a beautiful foundation, which is Christ. He taught us beautiful doc the, doc the beautiful doctrines of grace, sonship, humanity, believers' baptism, the one Israel. These beautiful doctrines we were blessed with and praise God that we can build on these beautiful doctrines. And I was talking to Big Robert about this, this uh, what I was going to be speaking on tonight. Uh, in the past, and and uh, Big Robert was telling us that the pastor paid a, a, a cost the pastor, uh, the, the pastor paid a cost for these doctrines, and a lot of people fell out of them over it. And uh, the pastor faced, into, uh, faced intense pressure. And we see in this passage that a lot of the people who were working on building the walls who faced an opposition as well, who we were, we were under pressure to, uh, when they were building these walls. And uh, they, they were building on a sure foundation. And tonight, brothers and sisters, we are here and we've mentioned that we, we've got a foundation that no man can lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. You may be feeling under pressure and you might be going through a difficult time, but the blessing is that you're in the will of God. We here in Zion, God's placed us here and God's raised this work up for us a purpose. You might be getting stressed out. 
with what's going on with the pandemic. And you might be going through something uh, personal, like financial issues or whatever it is, but know that the Lord's with us. And that's a beautiful thing that we can have. You may be thinking that you're doing everything right and obeying all the rules that's been put out by the government and seeing other people know uh, abiding by those rules uh, and we potentially face a resurgence of this, uh, this virus coming back with a second peak. But tonight, we can take comfort for this passage that God had a people whose heart was in the work. And praise God tonight that we've got our heart in this work in Zion. It says in Psalm 102 in verse 16, when the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. He will regard the prayer of the desolate and not despise their prayer. This shall be written for the generation to come and the people which shall create shall praise the Lord. When Nehemiah came to survey this work, it says that he, he, he came and he, he experienced opposition. And that's a lot, a lot of the time that in our Christian life, we might have faced opposition, but we've got God, and so did Nehemiah. It says, uh, uh, so tonight, I'm going to be speaking on uh, the work that Nehemiah had done, and I'm going to do a short across state from the word work. W is for, uh, or word, uh, and O is for opposition. R is for reliability, and K is for king. Let's come to the first first point. I'm just going to have a wee drink. W is for the uh, for word, and tonight we know the will of God because we know uh, what's in the word of God. We've been blessed here in Zion with the beautiful truths that we've learned, and we've been taught uh, that we're saved not of works, lest any man should boast. There's some of us tonight who are here that have been uh, for the Church of Rome who have been taught that you, you had to earn your salvation through penance or through uh, indulgences. And praise God tonight that it's not of works lest any man should boast. That's what we've been taught. We've been taught the doctrines of grace. There are also those amongst us who used to believe that, uh, that you, you chose to be a Christian, that you chose to be a Christian. And we've been blessed to know that uh, it's, it's nothing to do with us. It's all we do with God. We've been saved because God loved us, not because we loved him. As it says in Romans 9 and 13, and we are not saved because of anything in us. Oh, I beg your pardon. As it says in Romans 9 and 13, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. Why did God love us and not love others? Why have we been saved? It's been God's amazing grace. May that cause our hearts tonight to fill with wonder and praise. As we sang, thank you for the cross, eh, the price he paid for us. Jesus did that for you, and he did that for me. We've been taught beautiful truths. We've been taught about the new covenant eh, we have in Christ. And we've been taught these beautiful things. These are precious truths that we've been taught. We've been taught as well about believers' baptism, that it doesn't, it's not about being sprinkled in the head when you're away. It's about uh, it's about making a, a, a profession before the world and what's already happened in my heart that we've died to this world and we've risen to Christ. These things sometimes we can take for granted that we've been blessed with, but God's really blessed us with teaching us the whole counsel of God here in Zion. The scriptures didn't say in the beginning, was it a bigger pardon? I've jumped ahead. Well, we've got a blessing as well when we've, we've heard here in Zion about the sonship humanity of Christ. And uh, it says in First John, it says, it says in John what, John chapter 1 and verse 14, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his, his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Praise God tonight that we have, could, have, have I'm stuttering and stammering, I'm sorry. What I meant to say is that we've got, what, what the point I'm trying to make is here in Zion we've been taught beautiful things. I'll go on to the second point, which is O is for opposition. Like tonight, I've got, the, at the moment, I feel as if I'm, I, uh, I'm stumbling over my words 
and uh, the wee guy in my head is saying, Gary, you need to get this done because you're making a complete fool of yourself. But I'm doing it for God. So I apologise if I'm stuttering and stammering. Always for opposition. As I say, in Zion we've faced a lot of opposition. And the pastor uh, was attacked saying that he, he hated Catholics when he didn't. He made his stand because he loved the Lord. And he made his stand because he had a passion for souls. After the past, pastor went home to glory, people said that the work in Zion was finished. But praise God that Zion has had people who's had, who's had a mind for this work and it's kept this work going. In spite of opposition, the, the faithfulness of the brothers and sisters has kept this work going. We haven't stood in our own strength. We've stood believing in God. Zion is a people who's had a vision for this work who's had a mind for this work. And that's a blessing, brothers and sisters. It says in Romans 5 and 3, And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation work is patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope make us not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. Praise God. We heard this morning, as I say to Kenny, about the children of Israel, and they panicked when they saw the, uh, the, the pursuit of the Egyptians. But, God, but Moses trusted in Moses. And we, uh, and we heard this morning about the, the Red Sea being opened. Praise God. We, when others have left Zion, God is the people who have remained. Those who have, those who have been committed to building on the foundation that has been laid. And that's a blessing, brothers and sisters. I fell away for the things of God. And I'm sure other people who have left Zion and as the blessing are coming back. Like me and me and Anne, we've been uh, we've been in and out of the church. But praise God, there is people in Zion who have remained. Praise God. I, I, I it's such a blessing when I say that because God's good. We can say with boldness tonight that the world is gripped with panic and anxiety over the prospect of a certain, certain peak, of a second peak and a return of tighter restrictions. But tonight, brothers and sisters, we can say, but God, we can trust in God. As I'm doing tonight, as I'm stuttering and stammering, I'm going forward, but I'm trusting in God, that God put this in my, laid this word in my heart. And I might be stuttering and stammering, but, I look, eh, but God knows my heart. Praise God. I'm going to go into the, th- eh, the, sec- eh, the next point, which is R for reliable. I thank God tonight for the faithfulness of the brothers and sisters, as I mentioned in the last point, that God has the people that he can rely on. Uh, in spite of other people who have maybe fallen away for the things of God or went to other churches, God is the people who has stayed and built, built the walls of Zion. In Nehemiah, it says that God is the people who were, who were building, and that is a wonderful thing. What a blessing it is that the Lord can rely on you tonight, that can rely on me uh, to be in our place in Zion, to have our voices in the prayer meetings, have our presence at the open air. And what a blessing it is that Zion's got so many, that Zion's got so many prayer meetings. I, was, I got a blessing to, uh, this, this afternoon when Emily was talking, wait, I beg your pardon, when Emily was praying, and she was saying how this prayer meeting was started initially to pray for my brother Robert to be healed. But as a result of this prayer, as a result of this prayer meeting, uh, and us praying, we've seen uh, wonderful things taking place. We've seen uh, Francis, who when we initially were praying for Francis, we were just praying that uh, God would help her and her family come to terms with what's going on. But Andrew this week could testify that Francis has been healed of this cancer. I mean, the, what, the, the, the impact of the, the chemotherapy. But God's blessed us and God's answered my prayer for that. The same with Pauline. We prayed for Pauline that she would be able to, that it, it, it should be comfortable. But God has been healing her and we're actually praying that uh, she gets rid of this bed sore and that she's able to, to get back into the community. That's beautiful, brothers and sisters. God isn't just hearing our prayers, but God's answering our prayers. And that should encourage us when we're praying for revival or when we're praying for a new pastor. 
that God isn't just hearing my prayers, that God is answering my prayers. And praise God tonight that God has got people here in Zion who are reliable, that are in their place, that are in their place when, when it comes to being at the open air, that we, that we can either hold the banner or I can play the guitar and worship and Andrew can sing and we can have the preachers preaching and testifying to uh, how good God is. Praise God tonight that these things are in place because Zion is people who are reliable. And we do that because as it says in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 19, we love him because he first loved us. And as it says in Colossians 3 and verse 23, and whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. Knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the of the inheritance, for you serve the, the Lord Jesus. And that's what we're doing it for. And that leads me on to my next point. We're in this work, and we're, in, uh, we're serving the Lord, because, uh, and we've got a blessing with the word of God. But we're here tonight to praise King Jesus. We're, we're here to praise. K is for King. Why are we here tonight? Why are we remained in this work? It's because the Lord has been good. It's because we're here to praise the name of Jesus. Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It says in Jude 1 and 24, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to prevent you fault and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory and with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Saviour, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. We are here to praise our wonderful Saviour. Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We sat at the Lord's Supper this morning and I got an incredible blessing this morning when we were singing the hymns and I just thanking God that Jesus shed his blood at Calvary. His body was broken for us. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords went through that humiliation and went through that, that sacrifice that we might be bound for glory, that we, his people, might praise his name forever. That should thrill our hearts tonight. It's a blessing, brothers and sisters, to be part of the kingdom of God. Jesus, when he was speaking to Pilate, he says, my kingdom is not of this world. Brothers and sisters, we are part of the kingdom that Jesus was talking about. We are bound for glory because Jesus died at Calvary. We've got Christ's riches at God's expense. At you get God's riches at Christ's expense. I spoke a few weeks ago how Jesus came for glory for us as I was comparing that to Jacob uh, leaving his father's country, leaving his father's household to go his, uh, to go to Laban to get a, uh, to get his bride. Brothers and sisters, Jesus left glory for you. Jesus left glory for me. I know personally. I don't deserve the amazing grace that God's done in my life. I don't deserve to be a member of this beautiful church. I don't deserve to be a deacon in Zion. But God has blessed me with that. That's all of grace. And I can testify to that. What a blessing it is, brothers and sisters. We're saved. We're bound for glory for one reason. Because God's good. And because Jesus is King of Kings. So as we come to praise God after I preach. Let's just let our hearts be filled with wonder and praise that God's got a people here in Zion who's, who's got a heart for the work. I might have stumbled and stammered all the way through this, but what I was trying to say and what I was trying to testify is, let's sing, all hail King Jesus, all hail Emmanuel. The point I'm trying to make tonight, as I've, as I've just said, is we're here in this work we're here in this work in Zion that God has placed us in to give glory to God, to give thanks to God. And when we come to our prayer, when we come to our prayer meetings, let our voices be heard. Don't be bound up by thinking, I can't, I can't pray past a certain point. Even if you just stand up and you just say, thank you, Jesus. That's a beautiful prayer. We've got an amazing saviour. We've been taught beautiful things in Zion. Personally, I've, been, I've, not, uh, 
I've not had the displeasure of being taught uh, things that are wrong. I've been taught the beautiful truths in Zion. That's something I'm incredibly grateful of. So as we, we come to praise tonight, let's praise the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. <laughs> 